Hi guys, today I will be connecting an Ethernet module to my Raspberry Pi Zero. I've did it before and I'm going to do it again for the sake of this video. Um, so I bought a couple of these uh, ENC, that, what does it say? ENC 28J60 modules from eBay of course. And um, it's a 10 Mbit version. Uh, uh, they're available in a 100 Mbit version, um, but yeah, I didn't buy, buy that, uh, obviously. Um, and then again, I don't need high speeds for this uh, this Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, so yeah, let, let's connect it. Uh, let's see if I can get it to work. This one works. I made my own um, uh, Dupont cable for it, with Dupont connectors, and made my own uh, wires. Um, it's it's it's. It, Tiny setup like this, I, I like it a lot. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a little bit uh, uh, unfortunate that this board is rather large. It's it's a tiny bit uh, smaller than than the Raspberry Pi Zero itself. Um, uh, but yeah, this this Raspberry Pi Zero doesn't have an Ethernet connector. Uh, on it on it by itself, so we have to uh, edit ourselves. Of course. <coughs> I can use this. This is a, a, a USB uh, Ethernet module. This one is gigabit. Um, uh, that, so if I want speed, I can probably use this one better. Um, but it occupies the one and only USB port available on the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, which I do not want because I want to use it for other things. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, so it has a power port and a USB port. I tried using this as a USB port also because you can also provide the Raspberry Pi Zero with power on one of the, uh, the, the GPIO ports, but um, it doesn't work. It is solely a power connector, uh, unfortunately. So I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to connect it right now. So I made this sheet. And this over here is the connector on the uh, ENC module. I call it ENC module for now. And it has uh, 10 pins, CLK, wall, SI, CS, VCC, voltage, ground, RST, SCK, so and int. Um, the CLK, wall and RST we're not going to connect, they are not required. We're going to only use these three, these three and the ground of course. Um, yeah, I'm going to connect these, all these pins to the pins in the middle, so they're all together, uh, so we can make one connector or one, uh, so it, it's just easier. Um, you can, this, this device supports 5 volts, um, so you can either use the 5 volts pins if you do not have the 3.3 the volts uh, available anymore, but this chip gets very hot when it's connected uh, to the 5 volt uh, pin. Um, I do not recommend it, it pro probably lasts a little tiny bit. Uh, last long um, yeah so it, it prefers to run on 3.3 volts so let's connect it um, I'm going to start with the SI uh, which, which needs to be connected to uh, GPIO um, yeah I, I also call it G, GPO uh, I don't know why I do it it's, it's probably shorter GPO uh, a friend of mine said why do you call it GPO it's GPIO yeah uh, <laughs> I don't know why I do that so um, I'm gonna connect it to GPIO 10, which is uh, the physical connector, uh, physical pin 19, and uh, it's uh, um, on the left side. On the Raspberry Pi Zero, the most top left pin is pin 1, the, the most top right is pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, until you reach 39 and 40. So, pin 19 is on the left side, and uh, let's see. So, if this one is pin 1, Let's take the SI first. The SI is connected blue over here. So let's see the blue one. And pin 19. So let's see. 1, uh, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. There we go. And you're, the others get a, get a lot easier because the first one uh, I had to count the other, the other ones all, all, all in the neighborhood of this one so let's see and uh, the, the CS goes to pin 24 um, yeah, let, but let's let's see if I can take another pin which, which is closer to the 19 that is probably 17 which is the uh, VCC 
uh, I split this cable. Uh, I wanted to use a red and black. I chose red and brown because they were stuck together uh, for the voltage and the uh, minus and the zero, the ground, whatever you call it. Um, so this is a little bit uh, sticking to the original colors. 17, there we go. Alright, and um, let's see what I have in uh, on the other side. I've been 18 and 20, of course, and 20 is the ground, and that's the brown one. It sits right next to the 19, which is over here. Right, and let's see now. I can probably choose the 24 right now because that's then I've got this side covered uh, the CS GPO 8 is on pin 24 pin 24 is um, right here and let's see that is uh, what did I use I did use color, purple color purple over here connected to pin 24 right the int uh, or NT as it's called on this board, it's the same pin, uh, needs to be on GPIO 25, number 22, and 22, yeah, that's easy, and it's orange. Oh, that one is letting go, no, you cannot let go at this moment, orange, alright, oh, uh, why did I put the green one on there? Mm. Orange, yes. And SO, GPIO9, number 21. 21, it's over here, it's. Uh, yep. Yeah. And let's see. Yellow. There we go. And the final one. That would be this one because I've already connected the ground. It's GPIO 11 goes to port 23, uh, pin 23, and that's also on the left side, and that's over here. So, right, four on the left, three on the right. Four on the left, three on the right. So, I probably did it right. Let's see if it works. some power yes it does it is no current here for oh, pull it out before it starts to boot let's see if I can have a ethernet cable right here yes I do yeah it's doing all kinds of stuff so that's probably good So I paused the video for a moment to see if it came online, and it did. Um, and that's because I've already had this device connected to this before. Um, but if you do not have it connected um, before, you, ha you have to do a couple of things uh, to make it work. It's, just, it's very easy. I put it in the description of this video. Um, but for now, I'm going to tell you uh, what to do. Um, Let's see, <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is uh, start up the, uh, the, the general uh, uh, Raspberry Pi configurator. Uh, when you're on the command line, it, it's a little tool called Raspi Config, and it's spelled like this. And when I write this dollar sign, I mean this is this command line, this is the terminal. So um, when you root, you do not have to use the sudo, sudo command, of course, but when you're not, you're going to probably use the need the sudo command and then you're gonna need the raspi config tool dash config and press enter of course and um, then you're gonna see a black or not in a black a blue and red screen and it's you know, gray and it's got all kinds of options and you need to uh, go down to the option uh, where it says advanced options no it's, pro um, it's number nine and select SPI um, and well, SPI and then it asks you to enable or disable it and you want to enable it for this device um, 
that's the first thing you need to do and the second thing is you need to add uh, a, a small line to the uh, config file of the of the raspberry pi and it's 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 an existing file uh, so you need to edit it um, and on the uh, terminal on the command line you can either, either use vi uh, vim uh, nano uh, pico whatever tool uh, you, you prefer um, and, but you need to edit the dash slash boot slash config dot txt and there there is probably a, already a line which has uh, says something like dt overlay uh, it has another option and it's commented out by a pound sign or, or a hash um, dt overlay equals um, but you're gonna need to remove that one uh, so it's under, it says only dt overlay and then you need to uh, add the name of this device which is ank 28 j 16 and that's it now it works uh, when you reboot the raspberry pi zero um, the downside to is <coughs> to this is um, that this device does not have a hardware address, um, um, also called a MAC address. Um, so every time it boots, when it comes online on, on your network, uh, your DHCP server, which is uh, in your router if you don't run a standalone uh, version, with it's the server uh, um, which sends out all the IP addresses to all the devices on your network um, um, and uh, this one uh, let, let me st start over and uh, this device when it because it does not have a MAC address or hardware address it get, get, gets a MAC address randomly assigned to it every time it starts so your DHCP server um, uh, thinks it ha ha has a new device coming online so it, it, it finds a, a free IP address at the moment. Uh, every time it boots, it gets another IP address. And so that's uh, when you're gonna use it over a, uh, SS SSH, probably like me, it's, it's very uh, annoying to every time have to find out the IP address of this device. And most routers do not even have the ability to find out which leases the DHCP server has given out. Um, in, in my case, it's probably a little bit easier because I run my own DHCP server and I can look at the leases file and see what it got, but most of you can't, so that's annoying. So um, you have to connect a, a HDMI monitor to it, and when it boots, um, it, it says on the loading screen when it's done loading and uh, uh, presented you the uh, login prompt, um, it will say my IP address is something probably in the 196.192.168. Uh, anything um, and that's the IP address which you can use to connect to it um, but that's annoying I do not want to find out the, the IP, IP address every time so I'm, I'm going to uh, assign a, a, a MAC address to it which I make up myself because I uh, I, I don't have the money to <laughs> to um, buy my own Mac range from I, I, I don't know what this company called which is available uh, which is uh, assigned to give out the Mac addresses but so I make up my own um, it needs to be uh, hexadecimal and it is uh, has six pairs of 252 yeah, 256 um, bits and so as eight uh, let me see <laughs> I'm making a mess right now um, it's hexadecimal, so zero zero. It needs to start with zero zero, and then you can use anything so from one uh, from zero to nine, uh, and then a to f. So a f would be fine. One two would be fine. Nine a would be fine. And let's see one more, two more. One two three four would be fine. This would be a great MAC address. So every time now, when, when you assign this as a static MAC address to this device, every time it comes online, your DHCP server will think it, ha will think it has to deal with the same device again and will probably give out the same IP address as it did last time. Um, but this one, to, to set it like this, it's, it, it, 
Uh, it's a little bit more difficult than what I did here before. Um, but it's not really hard. And let's see. I, I probably not cannot not uh, write it out all on this paper. I'll, I'll put it in the description. It, it, uh, you have to create your own service file and you have to tell system uh, the, um, uh, to start it up every time. I'll put it in the description. It's very easy. But it gets this MAC address assigned every time. And that's it. And it gets the same IP address as before. So that's how you connect a uh, ENC Ethernet module to your Raspberry Pi Zero. Have, give it a static MAC address. And have it the same IP address every time on your network. And use it as a SSH server or anything. Ever, whatever suits your needs. Um, in this case I'm going to use it as, uh, as a, a device for uh, de detecting uh, motion, detecting uh, somebody walking through the door with, with a laser and a laser detector. Um, I'll probably handle that the, the next time. Um, so that's it. This, uh, I will mount this device somewhere uh, hidden in, in, in uh, next to my door or something i don't know yet but i will find a way and will probably make a video of it so that's it thanks for watching